What's up guys, Coach Matt and YouGoProBaseball.com. I'm here with Brandon Janeka, and we are in Leander, Texas, uh, about 20 minutes north of Austin, Texas, and we're at his place. He's the owner of True Grind Systems at 180 Performance Center. And in this video, I wanna talk about and ask you, the expert, how can guys run a faster 60? You know, it's super important in baseball. What are some things, just give us your expertise on the 60 yard dash and how guys can get faster at it. Awesome, yeah, uh, that's a big uh, test for, uh, for baseball and very, very important one. Uh, most of the guys, uh, especially the younger group, they can get faster just by getting stronger, getting in the weight room, having a consistent uh, training regimen, uh, getting more power in the lower body and being able to run. Obviously technique uh, comes down to it, so, uh, running the correct way, getting the correct shin angles, making sure the arms are moving the right way. So you mentioned shin angle, like what, what are you trying to work on shin angle wise, like when they're running, like what is the technique wise that you're trying to run or maybe some exercises that you're trying to implement when they're working on being, having a faster 60 yard dash? Right, so the acceleration phase is kind of the most important phase in a 60 yard dash. Um, guys usually don't reach top speed till around the 60 yard mark. So when we're training the 60 and the 40 and the 30, and when we're training speed for baseball, we really focus in on the acceleration phase, do a lot of 10 yard starts. We're really looking for a positive shin angle, which is, means the shin, the knee is out over the toes. Uh, we're trying to create more, more pistons in the legs where we're actually putting force at an angle behind us to propel our body this way. As we start to get into you know, the uh, eight, nine, 10 step range, that's when we start to go to your normal cycle where we're actually pulling through the ground. Uh, but those first few steps are, are more of a piston, punching the ground, getting that body moving, getting that momentum rolling. And then we start to enter the, uh, the, uh, the cycle phase where we, um, uh, the, the typical rotation that you see runners at. So it's like, it's, to me, I was a pitcher, but you know, it's all about creating the ground force, the equal and opposite action, uh, yeah, reaction. To it. So physics. if you're getting that angle, right, yep. then you'll be able, able to get more speed. Absolutely. That way. The, the, the force, the angle force is very important. If we want to jump higher, then we need to put force at a vertical angle. If we want to uh, uh, move in a horizontal, then we need to put force in a horizontal manner. Um, absolutely. Now, let me ask you this and I don't really know the answer to this, but maybe you do. When I'm looking at guys, and I like to look at some of the faster guys who are stealing bases, when they start to, to steal a bag, I always see this like little drop step first yes. in the front foot. Is that something that is good, beneficial to set them up, or should we work on eliminating that and, and getting the crossover as soon as we can? What, what's, what are your thoughts about that one? Um, my initial thought is the drop step. I, I definitely like the drop step. That drop step just creates that, that positive shin angle of the knee over, over the toe and it allows that hip to get through and then you can start to motor forward. Uh, but we never want to say never to, to either way. Some athletes will do better with the straight crossover, kind of the old school method of crossover. I know Ricky Henderson's a big base dealer uh, back in his day. Uh, he definitely drop stepped. Um, and he stole a lot of bags. Um, so uh, I think for the majority, for the bell curve, the drop step's gonna work, but as a coach, we have to make sure that we look at every subject uh, individually, and hey man, if this guy's running faster with the crossover step, then let's roll with it. I mean, we, our, our goal is to create the best performance on the field, so if this works for him for whatever reason, then that's what we need to train. So really, uh, we, we wanna take a look at both and see which one's better. And that's a great point because every athlete is different, Very you know, much so. um, and it's no different for base stealing or base running or running in general, I guess. Right. You know, every, Absolutely. like, I mean, think about it. Like I'm, I'm a, a tall guy, but I got really short legs and I got a long torso versus there's other tall guys who have, you know, really long legs and a short torso. Yeah, they're going to so be more than likely a little faster than you. The longer legs definitely help. Everybody's built differently uh, where the tendons insert onto the bones, man, is it plays a deal in everything uh, naturally tight, naturally loud. Um, yeah, man, it, it, it's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. We just need to make sure that we look at the subject as a whole and we don't get too caught up in one ideal or one theory. We make sure that, uh, that we stay open-minded as strength coaches. So being that you're looking at each individual athlete when they come in, is there some kind of screening process or evaluation that you do when they come in here? Absolutely. We go through a, uh, a very extensive uh, movement screen. 
where we take a look at uh, posture, scapula posture, uh, shoulder posture, hip posture. Uh, we take a look at active and passive range of motion. We take a look at breathing patterns. We take a look at muscle activation. And then we take a look at how they move. We get them off the table. Uh, we get them on the ground. We do squat, lunge, push up, you know, things like that. So we, we're looking at specific movement patterns because when we break it all down, when we break down mechanics to the most simplest level, mechanics is movement. It's movement in a certain order uh, to deliver a baseball at a very high rate of speed. And so if we can perfect movement in here, then that should transfer directly to the field, especially when we build explosive strength on top of that, that, that foundational movement patterns that's going to go right to the field. It's going to make the mechanic coach a, a lot easier job. Yeah, for sure. When you have an athlete, you know, especially I work with a lot of pitchers, when you have an athlete, even though you don't think as pitchers as athletes, <laughs> by the way, they are the best athletes on the field. Uh, but, you know, when you have a guy who's an athlete, they move better. They, Absolutely. So it's easier to tweak the mechanics and stuff. So, uh, you know, being an athlete first is hugely important. Yes. Speak about that. Uh, do you have? Is it only pitchers that come in here? Hitters? Is it only baseball players? Who Who are you training? Who's your typical client? Uh, baseball is definitely our bread and butter. Uh, we do specialize in baseball. Um, we're, we're really good with overhead athletes. Uh, we do a very comprehensive shoulder assessment uh, that really uh, prolongs the the athlete's career. We believe it does. Uh, we're able to identify. A uh, little minutia in the in the body to help uh, program specific exercises to help overcome uh, dysfunction, uh, but that's definitely not what we do. The great thing about training movement is every sport is movement, so we train all sports uh, from volleyball. Um, actually, I started my career with only volleyball. Uh, I started I did my first four years of strictly four or five years strictly training volleyball girls um, at a at a high school and collegiate level. Um, and uh, it, it's pretty interesting um, going from volleyball to really specializing in baseball is, is a very interesting um, transition. And I found out that volleyball is not too far away from baseball. Same energy system, very explosive, long rest, explosive jump, big hit. Um, the hitters are overhead and, and uh, trained very, very similarly. Um, so uh, absolutely we train softball, basketball, football, uh, golf. Um, track and field uh yeah we do it all we do it all but definitely bread and butter is baseball that's sweet i mean true grind systems is here in this room but you're connected over here uh in the 180 performance center you yes. know you've got dustin geiger over here doing a lot of the baseball stuff you got a uh you know pelotero over here bobby tewksbury yep. it's just a full uh, facility here where guys can come in and get everything they need basically right yeah we have a great squad here um super proud uh to be a part of these guys. A um, lot of experts in the game, uh, a lot of humble experts in the game, and we all feed off each other, we all learn from each other. Um, we get together on a regular basis, we talk constantly about our, our number one goal, and that's really what, what it comes down to is all of our goals align, and that is to get every athlete that steps into this facility um, to, its high, to his or her highest potential possible. Now, I hate to put you on the spot, but is there, if you had to come up on the spot off the top of your head with three, and I know every athlete is different, but three exercises guys could do to get faster or run a faster 60, like if they're coming in like, I, I wanna know how to run a faster 60 yard dash, you know, what are, what are your top three go-to exercises or drills for them? Okay, um, squat. I'll be more specific. Let's do let's do a single leg squat. Okay. Okay. So let's do a, a, a Bulgarian split squat or a rear foot elevated split squat. Let's do um, a bird dog. One of my favorite core exercises. What is that? I don't know that one. Uh, a bird dog is um, is one of my favorite core exercises. It, it's meant to uh, control the pelvis and the spine, and, and the pelvis and the spine is the nucleus of the body. So we have to control that aspect in order pr to uh, produce force. Um, if, if we can't control the spine, uh, the analogy that I like to use is if we're swinging a baseball bat and the handle and the barrel is connected by string, we're gonna bleed some power, okay? So if we have a loosey-goosey core or we don't know how to stabilize or brace our midsection properly, we're basically trying to hit a baseball with a, with a baseball bat where there's a string in the middle. 
versus solidifying the midsection, really bracing it and controlling that part of our body. Now we're talking a, a, a solid wood bat or a solid metal bat. Um, so I definitely like the single leg strength work. Uh, Bulgarian split squats is probably one of my favorites for that aspect. Uh, the bird dog is, is an awesome exercise for core stabilization. Um, it's a unilateral exercise, uh, has an anti-rotational aspect to it. Um, highly butchered, but uh, when, done <laughs> when done correctly, uh, with the right focus and the right intent, it, it is an awesome exercise. And uh, third and final exercise is sprinting. You want to get better at sprinting? <laughs> we need to sprint more. <laughs> we were so, just talking about Yeah, that. absolutely. That's, That's funny. That's awesome. Okay. So, rear foot elevated. Down. Up. Okay. Uh, you can go here uh, for a body weight version. Uh, usually, we're holding weight. Uh, everything from a barbell to a kettlebell to uh, two kettlebells or two dumbbells. And how far out am I going with the front foot? Pretty straight underneath? Or um, you're probably going to split that. You're probably going to split that right there. Um, I usually have the kids turn around and do it on the wood for that reason. reason but for demonstration purposes, this might be a better shot. Um, the big cue for this one is whole foot. We want to pay attention to where our weight is distributed on our foot. Um, I think that's going to identify 90% of issues, possibly even more. Okay, so we don't want heels. Don't want toes, don't want outside, don't want inside. We want the weight distributed amongst the whole foot. So even distribution, sometimes the arch works well with guys. If you say, hey, press through the arches, you know, sometimes they grasp that. But the, overall, the goal is even distribution of the, of the foot with the knee tracking just outside the middle toe. Just outside the yeah, middle toe. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay, so right here is the setup for the bird dog. Uh, it's okay. called the quadruped position. Uh, and we have to understand the intent of the exercise. The intent of the exercise is bracing, which means immobilizing the spine and the pelvis. Okay, so we don't want any kind of rotation or extension flexion of the spine. That's, that's the goal of this exercise. So we're going to do that first with our breath. Okay, so you're going to take a big, big gulp of air. And we're going to force that air into our belly. We're going to diaphragmatic breathe. Okay, so it's a... And then our belly is going to, I'm going to press out. I'm going to press my belly towards the ground. I'm going to make a, the biggest belly I can possibly make. And I'm going to hold that breath. Okay, and that brace. And then I'm going to extend one foot, one arm forward, an opposite arm forward. The thumb's going to be up like we're shaking someone's hand. And the, uh, our toe's going to be curled towards our shins. And our heel's going to go straight back. And then back down. And then straight back. And then down. And again, immobilizing the spine and the pelvis, no rotation of the hips. There you go. And I'm trying to keep these right under my shoulders? Yep, right, uh, hands right underneath the shoulders, knees right underneath the hips. Good. You're kind of donkey kicking a little bit. So you're kind of right here, you're going a little bit high. Make sure that we go straight back and not up. When we go up, you're going to force that ex uh, spinal extension and you're just going to set yourself up for failure. Uh, and I'm probably rotating when I'm doing yeah, that too. Yeah. Right there's money. Yep. I felt it there. <laughs> yeah, when done right, these are brutal. But you see so many guys doing this. Right. I'm like, man, come on. Banging out the rep, just trying to get the rep. Banging on the grade You go exercises. slow, right? Absolutely. And under control. You just and have just... intent, just like yeah. when you're on the mound. And you have an intent with every pitch, whether it's location, velocity, whatever you're working on. Um, you just have an intent, right? And, and how completion many... is not the intent for the, for the elite level guys. And there's still like a number to strive for, right? Like if you're programming a guy, are you telling him to do, you know, 10 of those each side? Or, or, or is it different? Or they're just trying to get a feel until they feel it? You know. uh, ten, 10 is uh, a fairly high. I'd, I'd say 6 to 12 reps. The 10-12 the is, is saved for the, the upper echelon guys, um, advanced collegiate, varsity collegiate uh, pro guys. Uh, with our younger guys, um, we'll go as low as 6 and, and really make sure we give them a low number so they don't enter that completion grade. When, when a 6, uh, when a 12-year-old sees 10, you know, they might get 2 or 3 good reps, but then they, they – 10 reps is a freaking mile to right, them, right? right. And, and they just don't comprehend very well. And right. so I, I'd, I'd rather do quality over quantity, uh, especially on something like this. There is a time for, for, for quantity, you know, uh, sled pushes, you know, hey, get behind the sled and let's just get after it, right? right you know, right. Not, not, 
getting too critical on everything, just kind of releasing energy. Uh, but this, when we're talking about the core and the bracing, we definitely want to be uh, particular with, uh, with the movement. Well, thank you very much. That was uh, awesome information. I appreciate it. Um, hope you guys liked this. If you guys are ever in the Austin, Texas area and you need to get some training in, if you guys live in the Austin, Texas area, come check them out about 20 minutes north uh, and uh, see, what, see what they're doing over here because they're doing some really good stuff. Got a lot of great players out here putting out some great information. So uh, thank you very much. I'll leave all the information in the description down below if you want to get in touch uh, with Brandon or anyone else here at the uh, Performance Center. And thank you so much for watching. Hop down in the comments section below and let me know what you're doing to work on getting faster in your 60-yard dash.